I don't know if you've ever taken a cat to a new house. Cats hate that. And because in their old house, and maybe in their old neighborhood, they've slunk around, you know, at the edges, checking everything out. They start out afraid. They check everything out. They know where to hide. They know where to. They know. They know. They know what what's safe, and they know that because they go somewhere and nothing happens, and so then they assume that it's safe, and they slowly build up a neighborhood that they're comfortable with. My dad used to take the dog for a walk, and then the cat got lonesome, and so it started to follow him. And first of all, it would just go along the buildings, the houses on their route, you know, hiding really from predators, and. After a while, I got kind of comfortable with that, and then it would follow right behind the dog. But it had a border, and if my dad took the dog over one street too many for the cat, the cat would just sit on the corner and, and you know, cry like a cat cries. It was like, that's it for me, man. I'm not going any farther out into the unknown. And so the, the distinction between the territory that you have mastered and the territory that you haven't mastered is a fundamental distinction. It's the distinction between home and, and, and the strange land. And the thing about familiar territory for people is that most of the familiar territory that we inhabit is other people. Because we're so social. So you can't really think, it's a weird way of thinking about territory. It's not exactly geographical, objective territory. It's territory with a dominance hierarchy in it. And the dominance hierarchy has a predictable structure and you know where you fit in it most of the time. And so that when you act out in that territory surrounded by your people, then often you get what you want. And you're so thrilled about that because you just don't want someone acting erratically around you. Like, and you know that. So you walk down Bloor and there's people there that should really be institutionalized, but we deinstitutionalized them all so they could be free and free to be, you know, suffering and malfunctioning out on the street that's what the freedom ended up being but you know you'll walk by someone like that who's muttering away to the voices in his head and you know maybe striking out against whatever it is that's plaguing him and you'll make eye contact you might even go across the street you're certainly going to give him a wide berth you're going to keep a distance between him and you and you're going to hope that you don't attract his attention because he's not in the dominance hierarchy and you don't know what the hell he might do. And that's unexplored territory too. That's another way of thinking about it. Like, we inhabit time and space, not just space and not just time. We inhabit time and space. And our territories are spatial temporal. We're here now. And this is safe now. And it's safe partly because of the physical structure and it's working, but it's also safe because none of you are manifesting peculiar behavior. But if you started to manifest peculiar behavior, if you stood up and started muttering or yelling, or maybe attacking someone next to you, all the rest of you would freeze first, because then all of a sudden this would be unexplored territory. The match between what you want, which is a peaceful lecture that you hope has some content, the match between what you want and what's happening has vanished. And so then you're not, you don't know where you are. And so then what do you do when you don't know where you are? What do you do when you don't know what to do? Well, if you're a computer, you just crash. But you know, what good is that to you? You're just going to die? That isn't helpful. You freeze first, and then maybe you cautiously, cautiously attend, or maybe you don't. Maybe you just keep your damn eyes averted, and you sit there, and you hope that no one notices you. That's a, predator, that's a prey response, right? That's like a rabbit frozen when it thinks a fox is looking at it. And we were prey animals for a long time. There was a cat that they recently discovered, a prehistoric cat that had this bottom single tooth and they found out that it a human skull fit right inside its mouth and so it could grab you here and pierce the back of your skull with its with its single tooth and that's what it was evolved for so you know it's under such conditions we evolved and we're predators obviously but we're tasty predators and so other things were perfectly happy to eat us 
And so when you're where you don't know what to do, you act like a prey animal. And that's probably what you should do, because maybe if you keep your head down and shut the hell up, there won't be any attention attracted to you. And maybe you'll get through it, you know. You, you might decide, unlikely, to intervene and take the guy down, but, but you would be the exception rather than the norm, and it's unsurprising. Okay, so, what I came to understand was that belief systems regulated emotions. But not exactly psychologically, like it isn't exactly, it isn't exactly, and this is sort of like the terror management theories, it's not exactly like you have a theory in your head and the theory explains the world, and because the theory explains the world, the theory is what's making you secure. It's kind of like that. It's like you have a theory in your head and the theory makes you feel secure because it explains the world, but the reason it explains the world is because other people have the same theory in their head, and then when you both act out the theory, you both get what you want. And it's the, it's the coming together of the theory and the outcome that makes you... It's life. Not only does it stop you from being anxious and, and often make you happy because you get what you want, but it's not just psychological, you know, the fact that we do this, that we cooperate within our societies, we match our belief systems and then act them out, that's the predicate for a productive society. So, it's actually, it isn't that just that it sa saves you from death anxiety like the terror management theorists have it, it's, it saves you from death. And that's good, I mean, being protected from death anxiety, yeah, oh, good, that's great too, man. But actually not dying, that's sort of the fundamental thing that you're after. And so, people have reason to defend their territory, if you think of territory that way, as, as you think about it as a domain where the fundamental presuppositions of each citizen are matched by the behavior of their co-citizens, they have every reason to defend that. And if it falls apart, it can have mortally serious consequences. It's chaos, you know, and that chaos doesn't just destabilize everybody psychologically, it destabilizes everything. It can destabilize the currency, it can destabilize the industrial economy, it can, the lights can go off, it's like, it's not good. So, hey, no wonder people protect it. <laughs>